Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, today our tutorial session is about uh, implementing BGP community with Geotex and traffic engineering using it. So if you are a transit provider or provider or if you are uh, planning to deploy an IXP, this can be helpful for you, this tutorial. So uh, who am I? I'm actually a free based developer, mostly a conference hopper and repeat offender, yep. Uh, normally I am not very a frequent uh, presenter in this part of the network, but I am a regular attendee in the Asia-Pacific region, especially in SANOG, the South Asian NOG, then uh, APNIC conferences or APRICOT conferences. Uh, I mostly work as a consultant for network systems and uh, Unix or Linux-based system integration, then large-scale BSD deployments, and definitely a professional paranoid. So why do we need location information about BGP routes or prefixes? The routers do not have a built-in GPS device with which uh, we can actually geotag it or do something, some sort of a tagging with which we can uh, find out the origin of a prefix. So we need to add some sort of a tag to the route objects or group of routes or group of prefixes. So how can we do it? We can use uh, BGP communities to do that. So what is BGP or the Border Gateway Protocol? BGP is actually the master of the ring for the whole internet ecosystem. So uh, if you are an organization who actually has an IP address or prefixes from RIPE, LACNIC, uh, AFRENIC, ARIN, or APNIC, then definitely you must use uh, BGP routing protocol to advertise your prefixes so that uh, other end users or other internet users can actually connect to your network. So it is an inter AS routing protocol, and it is used mainly for building the robust scalable network. So customers can choose like how to exit the network and like how to bring their return traffic. So, but how can you give more control? Because uh, we need to make the maximum utilization of uh, BGP routing protocol. So you can use BGP community. So why do you need actually BGP community? Uh, scalable network uh, needs them for its own purposes because you must be able to identify customer routes, transit routes, peer routes, and to tr perform some sort of traffic engineering and export controls, like how you can advertise it and with uh, which peering uh, customer uh, you want to export your routes to. And there is actually no other uh, pure acceptable implementation for this sort of a scenario other than BGP community. Beside yourself, actually, uh, customers also love using them very much well because uh, there are some power users and there are users who actually cannot properly configure even BGP, but sometimes those power users actually need more higher level of control, like how they can advertise their prefixes. So having some sort of self-supporting customers do not hurt either. The, mo the more powerful you can actually make your BGP communities, the more work it will save you in the long run, uh, the less work you'll have to do in the future. So there are some controls and caveats. Exit traffic. Most likely you cannot decide what should be your exit point. Sometimes the customer needs to decide because uh, a customer can have multiple upstreams and so the customer needs to define like with which upstream they want to send their upstream traffic to. But uh, definitely uh, as a transit provider you can help them a little more to decide. Then there's return traffic. So definitely you can control it, you can stop it and you can help the customer decide like how their return traffic is going to come back. So in BGP what happens is uh, your outgoing advertisement actually hampers your incoming traffic and your incoming uh, route preference actually uh, works with your outgoing traffic. So in the initial days there was a standard BGP community which was defined in RFC 1997 and with those style communities which are available actually for more than 20 years and it's then coded like a 32-bit value displayed more like a 16-bit ASN colon 16-bit value, like uh, the one mentioned here, 65535 colon 65535. It was actually designed to simplify more uh, internal routing policies, and uh, it can be used to signal routing information between networks so that an action can be taken, because BGP community is the only uh, BGP attribute that can traverse across different AS numbers. And uh, there are broad support in BGP implementation too. 
that is why it is widely deployed and required by network operators for internet routing to take place in different locations. But only four bytes really bytes because uh, there were two byte ASN, so for, the, uh, for that time the standard uh, BGP community was good enough. But when four byte ASN has hit the market, it's not because uh, if you're actually going to use your AS number for the four byte, how are you going to add some information or action beside that uh, community? But with the new PGP communities, the large PGP communities, you can do that. So you can fight a four bit, uh, fit a four bit ASN number in a 16 bit field, but you cannot use four byte ASN with the standard communities. Uh, the routing community was actually an entire need for this for nearly a decade from where the four byte ASN actually started uh, being uh, provided by the RIRs like RIPE, APN, ERIN. So the PGP largest, uh, large community attributes were defined in RFC 8092 and the idea progressed very much rapidly from the first quarter of 2016 from very fast implementation to deployment was done in between September 2016 to RFC on February 2017. And there are some final standards and number of implementation and tools were developed as well. So this is how a large BGP community actually looks like, the encoding and the uses of it. So you have got, uh, rather than previous 16-bit uh, value in two octets, now you have got 32-bit value in three octets. So there is no chance of an MSPS collision in between different AS, AS numbers. And uh, like there is a canonical representation like your AS number, then some, act, some sort of action, and then some additional information which you can encode in large BGP community. But please be aware that uh, large BGP community is not uh, too much widely uh, developed by the, all the hardware vendors like uh, even Cisco iOS do not have support so far, I recall, but Cisco iOS X7 XC has implemented it. The first implementation was, I think, was a bad routing demo in BGP. Then there is Juniper, Nokia, and FRR routing system, uh, which actually has support for large scale uh, BGP large BGP large com community. So if you need to play with uh, and test it out, you can use uh, some virtual machines using BARD. That might be a good option. So let's uh, do some analysis on uh, the community implementation of uh, one tier one provider, that is Tata Communication, using their AS6453. My examples are mostly actually based on Asia Pacific region because I belong to the Asia Pacific region. So uh, please try to adjust with uh, local norms, please. So uh, what AS6453, uh, what sort of community uh, they have deployed and what do they accept? So they accept all the standard communities like the no export and no advertise. Then you can also uh, use the local preference adjustment which accepts uh, four different local preferences, 70, 80, 90, and 110. For the standard for customer routes are local preference of 100, where the peer routes is 90. Uh, they, do not, they have not yet defined anything for the transit routes because uh, as a tier one provider, they are actually a transit free provider. Besides that, you can uh, use their uh, RTBH or remotely triggered black hole route for mitigating DDoS attacks. Uh, they accept only slash 32 prefixes that can be black holed using uh, this. Uh, community 64999:0, which uses actually a private number rather than their uh, AS number 6453. So those are some basic ones. Then they have some more uh, communities uh, which is used for distribution to their peers. So if uh, you use 6500N, where N stands for 1, 2, 3, uh, Colon number, AS, AS number, that is their peering uh, partner's AS number. Uh, AS6453 will be prepended n times to that peer AS number. Uh, if you are using uh, 65009 colon AS number, so to that peering AS number that prefixes with this community tag will not be redistributed. And uh, 
if you use a colon zero rather than uh, specific AS numbers, that uh, triggers like uh, prepending AS numbers to all of its peers. And if you are using 65009 colon zero, that means it do not redistribute to any of the peers, so it stays in between within only Tata communication. Besides that, they have got some informational com informational community like peering route, which classified as 6453 colon 86. Uh, there is nothing defined for customer routes and nothing defined for transit routes, as I have mentioned that they are a transit free pro operator. Uh, graph geographical information are encoded within four characters with limited visibility of their uh, network. So we are going to uh, discuss some problems which uh, are faced by the service provider and the customers and how we can solve it using BGP community. So the customer actually requests uh, inbound load balancing, then upstream's outbound traffic is pre sometimes prefer more expensive links, then upstream's outbound traffic is preferring more higher latency or packet loss link. Traffic is not returning more efficiently, like using the shortest or best path. Best path. So return traffic load balancing due to cost or latency or multiple geographical connectivity with same transit provider, then remotely triggering black hole route. So uh, problem number one, that is inbound load balancing, how can we address it? So the client, the client is ASX and the service provider is AS10102. The client has a multiple connectivity and to ensure the redundancy, they are advertising same prefixes in both links, in London and in Dhaka. The downstream traffic is received by both links, but client wants to specify a specific link for incoming traffic. So how can you solve it? Changing the local preference on one link, but uh, local preference actually does not traverse across different AS numbers. So upstream needs to change the local preference while configuring BGP inbound route policy. But upstream can set the local preference based on conditional BGP community check. So this is an example of uh, like when the upstream provider is actually accepting the prefixes from their customer. So they're actually matching uh, three different communities, like 10102 colon 75, 85, 95, or 105. So if uh, the community matches 75, then the local preference is set as 75, then 85, 95, or 105. the same thing uh, if you are using Cisco IOS. And the previous example was actually for Cisco IOS XR. So uh, what can the customer do? The customer can uh, match some of their prefixes and while advertising it towards a different link, they can actually uh, change the local preference, like reduce it or increase it depending on the scenario. So if the client is advertising uh, some sort of some prefixes with a specific community like 102, 102 colon 75, 85, 95, or 105, at that time what happens is when the route is being received by the upstream provider, the upstream provider resets the lo uh, local preference value based on the community. Sometimes the uh, problem too, we are discussing about the outbound traffic preferring more expensive links. So we can see that the customer has multiple upstream providers. Uh, the upstream AS10102, you can see it has uh, connectivity to multiple internal exchange points or IXP, like from London router, they're connected to the London Internal Exchange. In Singapore, they're connected to Equinix IX. In Bangladesh, they're connected to BDIX or Bangladesh Internet Exchange. On another point, they are actually connected to another service provider called ASY. So ASY uh, inbound routes are won by the customer's router, whereas uh, AS10102 has uh, so many better routes through the internal exchange points. So AS10102 provided BGP communities for identifying the transit routes, uh, private peering routes, public peering routes, and the customer routes. So uh, and AS10102 defines different local preference for different routes. So 
So before understanding this problem, we need to understand what are the links type for an upstream provider. So we have uh, transit routes, we have peering routes, peering maybe in public or private, and then we have customer routes. But uh, before understanding, uh, before moving forward, we need to understand about the uh, financial terms too. The network operator, for the transit types, a network operator pays money or settlement to another network or another transit provider for accessing the internet. Uh, if you have the idea about a tier one provider, uh, there are actually couple, uh, 11 or 12 tier one providers in the whole world right now who actually does not pay each other to connect to their network and that's how they are actually getting transit towards the internet. So for a transit link, you're actually paying money. That's why a transit link is always the costliest one. Then there are peering links. Normal peering like it can happen in public peering or it can happen in private peering. Uh, two network exchange networks actually exchange traffic in between their users freely and for mutual benefit. And it's mostly connected at a public internet exchange point like links in the London Internet Exchange. Then DECIX, DECIX is actually a commercial IX. Uh, so if you are preferring non-commercial IX, then you can use uh, AMS IX or NL IX. Then there are uh, internal exchange points or IXP actually charges a very nominal fee just for financing their equipments and maintaining their equipments and uh, their connectivity regularly. So public peering is actually less costlier than transit. Private peering is the same as the public except only two specific networks connect with each other and it uh, takes place privately. So only the link hosts are involved. It is much more less costlier than public peering, uh, depending on the geographical location and the uh, type of uh, connectivity you need. Then there is uh, customer links. A network pays another network money to be provided with internet access. Uh, so when you are connecting your router, uh, connecting your customers, you are actually earning money. So there is no cost involved for yourself as you are generating own revenue from connecting new customers to your uh, endpoints. So you must f uh, figure out a budget decision and uh, you must calculate it before uh, designing your network. So customer routes are the least expensive, so customer routes should have higher preferences. Then private peering routes are more expensive than customer routes, so these should have lesser preferences. Public peering routes are more expensive than private peering routes, so these should have lesser experience, uh, preferences. Then the transit routes are most expensive, so these must have the least preferences. So sometimes uh, outbound traffic prefers uh, expensive links, so the upstream provider has, or you ha have uh, two, specifically two different tasks. Setting local preferences. So for a transit or local preference, you can set it to 90. For public or private peering, you can set your local preference to 95. And for the client routes, you can set it to 100. But how do you distinguish in between or isolate those uh, different routes? So for transit routes, uh, these are for informational routes, uh, information uh, which you want to tag with BGP community. So for the fast digit of the second octet in the BGP community, you use one for specifying for transit routes. For public or uh, private peering routes, for the second uh, the fast digit of the second octet, you can change it to two or three, like 10102 colon 2XXXX. So I'll actually define what uh, the fl uh, rest of the four Xs uh, we have kept. Then we can actually define uh, for the client routes with uh, the fast digit of the second octet with four, so one zero one zero two colon four and other numbers. Then we can use uh, and define more geotags to encode like uh, where is the originating place of the of that uh, route or where you have connected with the customer from which the routes are being learned. So. Uh, for customers, we are actually uh, adding a community 10102 colon 41011. I'll explain later like what we, ha what we want to uh, define with 1011. So we are adding that uh, information. 
Then for private peers, we are using 31011. For public peers, we are using 21011. For transits, we are using uh, 11011. And you can see that we have changed the preferences accordingly. So uh, by default, the local preference is 100 in the Cisco routers. For, so the, for the customers, uh, we are not changing the local preference. But for the private peers and the public peers, we are changing it to 90. For the transit routes, uh, we are changing it to 80. So uh, the upper stream has defined and uh, optimized outbound routing for your for customers and for uh, within their network, but customer has to route selective traffic up to upper stream's router. So the local preference rests to vendor neutral default value across AS number. So this is a small example of uh, how you can get the information and uh, you can route specific traffic through that. So as you uh, remember from the image that ASY actually do not have any sort of connectivity with any internet exchange points, but uh, AS10102 has connectivity with uh, London IX, Equinix IX, and BD IX. So uh, these uh, IXP generated routes, those are actually tagged with uh, 10102 colon uh, starting digit is 2 or 3. So on the first community list 100, you can see we are uh, uh, matching an BGP community with 10102 colon uh, in a square braces 2-3.4 uh, in curly braces. So if anyone has any idea about regular expression, you can get it. If not, let me explain it. So uh, in the square braces, 2-3 means that this first digit can be either 2 or 3, and uh, following by four digits, four numerical digits. And for the IP community list 101101, that is uh, 10102 colon, the first digit is definitely one, followed by four numeric numbers. So while uh, we are receiving the prefixes from 10102, we are trying to match the community 100, match community 100. that is the uh, 10102 is receiving all the prefixes generated from their uh, IXP exchange points like from London IX or Equinix or BDIX, and so their local preference is 90. Then for uh, other, that is 101, that is when uh, the originating prefixes are from their peering points, there we are actually uh, setting the local preference to 80. So and add, as ASY do not have any connectivity with any other IXP, so we are calculating them as all uh, peering routes, uh, all transit routes. So we are actually setting it to 80. So what happens is after this, ASY and uh, AS10102's transit routes, they have all equivalent uh, local preference for 80. But when uh, you have a better route towards any of the internal exchange points in London IX or uh, Equinix or BDIX, you get a better route through 10102. Sometimes the outbound traffic uh, prefers higher latency links. So the client has a router in Dhaka and in London, while, uh, whereas AS10102 has also uh, uh, routers in London, Singapore, and Dhaka. So Customer routes are tra uh, traversing through uh, high latency or ping loss links, or sometimes customer is connected with uh, in multiple locations. So customers Asia Pacific uh, destination traffic from Dhaka is traversing high latency London router and uh, then going to Singapore, whereas customers uh, European Union destination traffic from Dhaka is traversing their high latency Singapore router and then uh, going to London. 
So customers are able to be sent traffic from London is traversing their high latency Dhaka router is going through Singapore. So how can you solve uh, these sort of complex problems? So the upstream provider or you as the operator is tagging routes based on its origin AS number as following. So for Asian region, the second digit on the second octet is one. You remember that the first digit you have already occupied with types of route, that is either it is a, a customer route, peering route, or a transit provider route. So the first digit is gone, so now you, you are working with the second digit. So for the Asian region, let's define the second digit as 10102 colon x1. Then for African region, you can define it as x2, and so on for different uh, continents. So for North America, we are using four. For South America, we are using five. For Australian region, we are using six. And for, uh, yeah, there is no Antarctic, I don't know any of any uh, internet transit providers in Antarctic region, but if there is in the future, you can use seven. So uh, as the operator, what you are going to do is, uh, while you are connecting to the uh, pairing with the peer routes, uh, you can uh, set the uh, community for 10102 colon 21011. So uh, one stands for Asia, uh, 01 stands for uh, Dhaka. For the transit, that is same alike, but just, uh, just the first digit is going to change to one. For the customers, the first digit is going to be four. So that's how you can uh, define uh, some uh, community for the uh, location information. We are going to deep dive more into this in the later slides. Like for Singapore, like we are using a uh, different country code like 02. So uh, you can see that the fourth digit is going to change from 01 to 02. Same thing for the uh, transit providers. And for the customer routes, you can see that we have changed the fourth digit from 01 to 02. For London, let's uh, check it out like we are using, uh, changing the second digit also, because London actually lies in European Union, so we are changing it towards three. And then uh, we are changing the country code with the, uh, for the European Union, London, uh, or UK, the country code is 01. So how can uh, the customer actually utilize this information to uh, make uh, much more uh, wide use of it? So uh, there is uh, two different community lists, 100 and 101. So uh, in the London router, you can see that we have uh, matched numeric digits uh, one to five, something within uh, one and five, then the second digit is three, following, followed by three numerical digits. For that, we are actually changing the local weight of uh, the outgoing uh, traffic towards 1,000. So weight is another BGP attribute which is actually local to the router and it doesn't traverse across uh, within your AS number. So that will be changed to the uh, Uh, local uh, London specific routes. The same thing actually stands for, but and on the other hand, you are seeing that uh, the other peering routes, like within its own route specific link, that is the in the connectivity between London and Dhaka within their client AS, uh, within their client's AS number. We are changing the origin and we are checking uh, the match community 100 and then changing the weight to 1000. For Dhaka, it is just uh, vice versa because uh, you can see that for the uh, uh, 10102 in, that means uh, the Rapid Providers uh, community we are matching for uh, community list 100 and then changing the weight to 1000. And the same is chance for uh, changing the community list of uh, 101 
So when the prefix or connectivity in between the London and Dhaka, it's going to uh, get the community matching the community list 100, 101 and going to change that uh, weight towards 1000. Okay, uh, so this is uh, an example scenario of how it's going to uh, affect uh, and change the scenarios in the routing advertisements. So there has been actually a debate like uh, whether it is a really gives added advantage or not. Uh, AS1002 used uh, this sort of a setup and it really thinks that it gives some sort of a better result. Uh, we have gone through uh, additional checks for this. So let's first uh, check the that uh, AS1002 has a upstream provider of Tata communication. So uh, they have uh, the BGP community of 6453 colon 3000, which belongs to the, uh, which actually identifies the routes from Asia Pacific region and for colon 2000, which uh, defines that the routes are originating from EU region. So we are uh, going to do some case study with uh, one prefix from 1041. So you can see that uh, this prefix has got uh, BGP community 6453 colon 3000. So with the default BGP table, we have done a trace route and like you can see that uh, uh, the latency is around 632 millisecond. And using via the London path, the other uh, specific path, the latency is around 530 millisecond. So after changing the routing policy based on what I have just described, you can see that uh, the path has, uh, the latency has actually dropped to 259 millisecond. So definitely it gives a much more better result compared to 530 millisecond and 632 millisecond. So uh, what was the uh, route policy for 101102? So if the source is 27092255, so this IP actually belonged to the Singapore router and the community matches anything from A6453 Asia Pacific or AP that is 6453,3000. In that case, set the weight to 2000. And if not, then just done and continue. So that was actually the configuration that helped us get a far better result with the outgoing, uh, with the latency and with the reachability of that specific uh, IP prefix. Here is a second example of uh, another prefix from 1.8.52.1. So here we are uh, talking about 6453.2000, which is stands for the EU region. So here the default uh, BGP table, we are getting around 304 millisecond. The trace route result. But after the route, applying the route policy, you can see that we are getting something 171 millisecond. So uh, here was the routing policy, and if the source is in 1.2.16.142.0, which is actually the loopback IP of the uh, London router, and the community matches anything for AS6453-EU, AS6453-EU, that is uh, colon 2000, then we are actually setting the weight to 2000. Otherwise, we are done with this uh, policy. So this actually gives us a better result. So in both cases, we can see that we have lower latency, lower hop count, and better performance. So uh, return traffic is not uh, exiting the So, uh, as you can see that uh, the customer is connected in two different networks, as usual, in 10102 and another service provider. 
and it is also connected with S10102 in London and in Dhaka. So customer is actually advertising all uh, same prefixes across all upstream from uh, both the routers. So customers' uh, Dhaka restaurant traffic from London routers is coming through customers' London routers from the of the upstream's Dhaka router uh, consuming all of their uh, direct connectivity link in between their London and Dhaka router. The same stands for their London restaurant traffic from Dhaka router is going through customers uh, London router instead of the their upstream Dhaka router consuming their uh, own backbone in between London and Dhaka. So customer cannot change the local preference because sometimes uh, changing it causes all its traffic routed via the other service provider or ASY because by default uh, their uh, uh, ASY is all local preference are set to default. That's why uh, changing the local preference in any side might force the customers all traffic to come through other provider and changing the local preference in one side might result in 10102 uh, transit routes to win over their customer routes. So what is the safest attribute you can use in this sort of a scenario? There is one BGP attribute that is called MED or multi exit discriminator. Uh, which we have to use here, but MED is also uh, ac uh, passed across uh, AS numbers. So what happens is by default, uh, MED, is MED is configured to carry out their IGP metric towards uh, other routers. So what happens is we have to reset the MED value to zero because uh, the lower the metric value or the MED value, the more preferable the route is for uh, outgoing traffic. So here is an example of how the upstream provider is actually uh, changing the, uh, or resetting the metric value towards zero. So. The Apache provider has defined one BGP community called 10102 colon 4000. So if the customer is actually advertising some of their prefixes with this prefix, uh, with this uh, BGP community, then the Apache provider is going to reset the metric value towards zero or the MED value towards zero. Otherwise, done. So the customer will actually uh, figure out a specific prefix list based in London or based in Dhaka and then so the customer will, uh, what prefixes the customer will advertise towards London, and based on that, they are going to advertise it with uh, 10102 So what happens is the uh, London specific routes from within uh, upstream provider or your, uh, or the operator's uh, routers are set to, uh, reset to zero. So what happens is the London originated routes are served from upstream providers or 10102's a London router, whereas for the other uh, prefix list which are originated from Dhaka, those are actually not changed. So in that case, uh, the metric value is not changed, so those are not actually hampered by that. So what happens is in these same cases uh, where as we are just taking a simple BGP community of 10102 colon 4000. So we have the same thing in London and Dhaka. So for the Dhaka originated routes, if we just uh, change it, uh, change this one uh, specific line that is set community 10102 colon 4000 for uh, outbound prefixes in Dhaka, origi uh, originating in Dhaka. So that actually just changes the scenario for, s for the client in Dhaka too. So this is an example for uh, Dhaka site like how you can reset the metric value towards zero and the local originated prefixes will uh, get higher preferences from Dhaka. Then comes uh, return traffic load balancing. The customer is connected with uh, AS10102 and let's say one of our own uh, upstream provider like AS6453. So AS6453 is a tier one provider, whereas uh, AS10102 is not a tier one provider. So the customers have direct connectivity with uh, our upstream provider too.
So customer doesn't want its Asia Pacific traffic, return traffic from Dhaka router to come through AS10102 except only the uh, last resort as they have got a direct connectivity with uh, AS6453. So AS6453 is uh, Asia Pacific originated traffic should traverse to them from uh, their direct connectivity in Mumbai, India. And the same like with the customer doesn't want their EU return traffic from AS6453 uh, because AS6453 they are connected in Asia Pacific region but they want their routes connect coming up from uh, their London connectivity in uh, through 10102. So how are you going to address this same thing using BGP community? So customer will use uh, AS10102 for transit to AS6453 Asia Pacific region at the last resort. The customer prefix has to be AS path prepended towards AS6453 in Asia Pacific region. Customer prefix has not to be advertised towards Asia uh, AS6453 European Union region, but also to other upstream and peers. So AS10102 has defined a uh, community for path prepending once, then path prepending twice or thrice. And uh, like you can also, uh, we have also defined like not to redistribute the routes or using uh, no export. So what it stands for uh, for this one is actually an action BGP action community. So the BGP action community will be limited for within four numeric digits or so like uh, we have configured one CTP, two CTP, three CTP, and five CTP. So what uh, does the C stands for here? C stands for some value in between zero to seven. Zero is globally and one to seven is the region code. You remember in the uh, initial slides where I have showed like how to add uh, continental information like uh, one for Asia, two for EU, three for North America, four for South America and the, so it goes on. And TP stands for uh, transit provider code. So if we are using uh, zero zero in the last two digits that is globally, for zero one we can define as six four five three four zero two we can use three three five six and so on we can add uh, definitely up to nine nine. So uh, what we are doing when we are advertising towards uh, our upstream provider of Tata Communication. So we are trying to uh, match communities with uh, 1001 and 1101 as mentioned earlier here. That is, uh, if the first digit is one and the second digit is globally or uh, Asian region. So this is how you can see that we are prepending as 10102 once, twice or third or thrice or even we are dropping if uh, the community matches 5000, 5001 or 5101. So what happens is for 5000 it is a, a global drop, for 5001 it is a drop for only uh, for uh, A6453 in any location, for 5101 it is for uh, A6453 within Asia Pacific region only. One is actually one is the uh, continental code of Asia Pacific or Asia. So now this stands for uh, Singapore. So uh, you can see that uh, the second country code is actually changing. So that's how you can utilize it for Singapore. Then here is for London or European region for the second digit is changing to three and the rest of zero one stands for uh, London in European UK in European region. So three zero one stands for uh, United Kingdom in Europe. So how is uh, the client uh, going to control their outgoing BGP advertisement through uh, 10102 the upstream provider. So they are going to uh, match, uh, use a match clause with, for some of their prefixes, then they are going to set the community for 3101 and 5301. So what happens is uh, 3101 that defines that we have to pass prepend a 10102 thrice in Asia Pacific region for 01 that is for AS6453. 
and when that is 5301, that means we are going to drop all those prefixes not being advertised towards uh, a European region in 65, uh, for a 6453 or Tata communication. Then there is another problem that is uh, DDoS. There are definitely transit providers or operators who have faced DDoS attacks or DDoS attacks in their network and definitely sometimes you are the victim, sometimes your end user or the, your customers are victim. So uh, what happens is when you are attacked by a massive uh, DDoS connectivity, there is uh, hardly uh, few time, uh, hardly any time to recover from it. So like what normally what we do, we uh, inform it to our upstream provider, our upstream provider tries to uh, black hole that route so that uh, any, any, traffic, any traffic going towards their destined uh, host is actually dropped from their network. But what if you can give control towards uh, your user? So rather than uh, waiting for your customer's feedback, the customer actually can uh, tag it with some BGP community and advertise it towards you, which will actually help you uh, doing the same thing but in an automated fashion. So customer actually has to let their upstream or upstream's upstream know about the destination address. So AS10102 has the community for uh, remotely triggering black hole router RTBH which is stands for 10102 colon zero. So here is actually an example of uh, how AS10102 is uh, black holing this route. So uh, there is uh, one prefix that is slash 32, uh, which is null routed by uh, S10102, and then uh, they are redistributing a static route policy black hole. So what is actually the in the black hole route? So while they are actually uh, receiving the routes from their customer ends, they are matching some community, that is the 10102 colon zero. If it matches, then they are setting the tag to 66, and they are set changing it to local preference of 200, checking, uh, changing the origin towards IGP because then it will distribute it towards the uh, other uh, IBGP speakers or BGP route reflectors. So then they are changing the next hub towards 192.0.200. Uh, that is actually not routed and that is, uh, they are setting the community towards no export. So what does the black hole route do? The black hole route checks if the tag is 66, then they are doing it, uh, the local preference is 200 because uh, this needs to be tagged towards uh, the static route which is redistributed within their, using in their IGP. So this is an example of how the customer actually uh, does their configuration part. So they are, uh, this is just an arbitrary number, 10, dot 10, 10, 10, 10, uh, which they are actually use, uh, null routing using null zero, then uh, with the black hole route, what they are doing is they are just setting the community to 10102 colon zero and advertising it towards their upstream 10102, where uh, the upstream provider is actually uh, black holing the route, so no traffic from, uh, for that specific IP is going to through their uh, link and uh, bottlenecking their link in between their upstream 10102 and their customer. So that was uh, some of the problems and solutions you can do using BGP community, but uh, how actually can you design your own internal community? You must have some practical consideration before uh, designing it. Uh, most of the routers cannot actually parse PGP community as strings, so rather than integers using regular expression. So you have to design your BGP community system with this in mind. Think more like a strings and character positions rather than numbers. For example, 10102 colon 1234 can be parsed as field number one of value one, then the second field of value two, three, or the field number three of value four. But uh, this value actually cannot be easily parsed numerically, for example, as larger than 1233 or less than 1240. And 
using a standard BGP community is definitely uh, remember not to exceed the value of 65535 as a 16-bit value. So uh, there are 65536 numerical options, but uh, the value starts from zero, so it stands at 65535. So BGP communities are actually uh, carried across different AS numbers. So as long as uh, your Appstream provider and your uh, end users have enabled BGP communities in their uh, BGP sessions. So practical BGP community implementation can be essentially classified in two different types, more like informational tags and action tags. So communities set by and sent from a provider network to tell or inform their customers or in other interested parties about a specific route. And action tags, whereas communities are set by and sent from a customer network to influence the routing policies of the provider network. It can alter the route attributes on demand, so it can be used both globally and within own network, and it can be used to control import or export of uh, specific routes. So when we are uh, designing the informational tags, informational communities will focus on where the route was learned or the geographic data, like continent, country, region, city, etc., in a short numerical value how the route was learned, the relationship data, like whether if it was a transit, peer, customer, or internal route, because there is no other good way to carry this information within your network or within across, sending this information across other networks. Because the data can then be used to make uh, different policy decisions, like uh, maybe it may be you, maybe our customer, or maybe with an unknown third party. So, you must uh, export this data to the internet, uh, which can provide some invaluable assistance to other third-party networks, which you may never know about. And this might be a very uh, good thing for everyone. You might uh, keep this information in your IRR uh, AS number, who is information, or maybe you can use some uh, peering DB or other IRR service providers where uh, someone can get it globally, all the information regarding your uh, BGP communities. So, uh, how you can encode this arbitrary data in within those specific numbers. So every network must define their own mapping. So like for continent, you can use uh, one, two, up to seven for uh, different continents like Asia, Africa, Europe, anything else for the relationship like transit or public peers. You can use uh, other standard-based encoding like uh, ISO 31 uh, country codes into three digits. You might use this uh, uh, in maybe large BGP communities because it has got a more wider value of four bytes. Uh, if you want to use a numerical country code within uh, Using the UN format, you can use the M.49 format too. So how you can provide this information? As always, the exact design decision depends on a specific network and footprint you have across the globe. Network with only a few major cities may want to focus on uh, about the cities on a short list. Networks of a great number of cities may want to focus on uh, regional aggregation specific to their scope like uh, continent, then country, then a specific pop code within that country. And you have to plan for the future because uh, you cannot change a community design after it has already been published and it is widely used by the users because uh, after that customers, uh, while their customer, the customers are using it, it may be impossible to change. So, Make sh uh, you have to make certain that uh, the informational tags from your action tags are, can be dist in distinguished from your uh, action tags because informational tags always must carry five characters in length and action tags to be uh, four characters or less. So this allows you to easily pass the information tags using a regular expression. So like what happens is 10102 colon uh, dot fully stop then in curly braces five that is uh, you are accept uh, you are dropping all sort of 
uh, prefixes which are coming towards your network with uh, BGP communities uh, which have uh, 10102 colon five digits of number because those are actually supposed to be uh, your information and you are only allowed to uh, attach those information towards the prefix and no one is allowed to uh, send the informational text outside you and they should be stripped from the all BGP neighbors that is customers, transits or peers because uh, otherwise that's going to be a massive security problem and someone might advertise other prefixes with this information which will definitely uh, hamper the traffic uh, within your network or external to your network. So how can you uh, provide this information in a simple manner? Uh, you can use 10102 colon T. Uh, these are five different colors. So you can see that the type of relationship, the continent code and country code and the pop code as informed. So uh, let's say for the community 10102 colon 21021, it can be parsed as a public peering. Uh, the value two is for public peering. The one stands for the second uh, digit of one stands for Asia. Zero two is the country code for Singapore. Whereas, uh, and then the first number is one, which stands for Equinix in Singapore. In Singapore, you can have a multiple pops. So for Singapore, you can use like two one zero two, then two three four five for different uh, pops, like in Equinix. So th there are these types of routes, transit or upstream provider routes. So one, then public peering for two, for private peering you are using three, for customer routes you are using four, for internal routes you are using five. Here is the continents code. The, for the second digit you are changing the different value for one to seven. For the countries we are using uh, the third and fourth digit uh, matching with the uh, second digit, so Bangladesh and Singapore is within Asia Pacific region. So for the first digit, we are using one for Bangladesh. So bang for Bangladesh, it is for one zero one. Whereas within European region, there is the UK. So we are using two zero one or two zero two. So I don't know what's going to happen after Brexit. So then there is one zero double one. That is uh, one for Asia region, zero one for Bangladesh, and for one is the central knock. The same stands for, I think there is a small mistake here, 1021, it should go for Sing uh, Singapore Equinix, then for 22, it should be Singapore Global Switch. So in uh, UK, there are pops like Telehealth North or Tele, and so you can use 2011, so 2 stands for Europe region, 01 for UK, and Telehealth North for 1. Then there is Telex in US, so 3011, 3 stands for North America, 01 for United States and the last one for the telex in New York. Then you can design to provide uh, access to action. So for 10102 to colon zero, what you are doing is you are allowing someone to black hole your route. Then you are uh, allowing to changing the local preferences within your network. So if someone is sending their uh, prefixes with community like 10102 colon 75 or 85, 95 or 105, you are changing the local preferences and uh, resetting the local preference within your network. Then you are using 10102 colon 4000, which is allowing you to reset the MED or the multi discriminator, discriminator value towards zero. This can be only used when local preference is not a good solution for you. Besides that, you can have the standard. Uh, no export values using a different numerical code, much more easier to handle. So uh, if you're defining uh, for no export, uh, 10102 equal to 5,000 and no advertise, it is 6,000. So the basic difference between no export and no advertise is keeping within the AS and keeping within the local router. Uh, how the user can actually control like where their routes are being advertised towards peers or towards other transits. So uh, 5 CTP means do not distribute to transit provider or peering ASN number. Within a standard BGP community, that is difficult to add a peering ASN number. So rather than that, we should use a code from 00 to 99 uh, using a continental code like C. So 
uh, for one CTP we are using prepending AS10102 once, for two twice, for three thrice. So this is stands for the different codes. So like if you are using 100 globally, that means that the, uh, if you are using uh, 1000, so that means globally across all uh, Provided we are prepending AS10102 once, so the same as chance for uh, 5000, so we are dropping all sort of uh, prefixes from being advertised towards uh, other networks. So if you are uh, using a transit provider code of 01, that means for Tata Communication, for Level 3, for Cogent, for what? So you can actually create a list up to 99 providers. Uh, and if you have those two providers in different regions, uh, different continental codes, so you are actually getting three numerical digits, so making it possible uh, to uh, make a huge list of providers. So there are some caveats within this, uh, uh, within what I have actually tried to do in, within using this tutorial. There is one RFC, it's called uh, RFC 4384, which uh, where the BGP community is used for data collection. Uh, it is also defined in BGP best collection, uh, best uh, current practice 114. That also use, tries to use a similar approach, but it uses in a bit level. So while it uses uh, the approach uh, towards the bit level approach, so we have to use uh, consider, consider numerical values rather than a strings, like the way I have used it. So uh, if you're trying to use a numerical value, only iOS XR and JunoS supports matching numerical community ranges. So the other open source technologies like uh, BIRD, FRR, they actually do not support uh, matching numerical values, but rather they try to rather, rather match with regular expression using uh, considering the numerical values as characters, not as numer uh, numerical values. So uh, when user, you are using this for uh, this RFC for information purpose. Actually, there is no space remaining for action communities unless you are using extended BGP communities. And using this technology, you can only point up to country level geolocation. So you cannot define the cities or define pops like the one I have mentioned earlier. So uh, these two have two, uh, totally two different uh, point of view towards the uh, problems and solutions we have tried to address here. Here are some reference uh, purpose. Uh, one uh, important thing about here is the RFC 8195. Uh, this is actually the use of large BGP community and this has got, this is actually the closest to match this tutorial if you have a four byte S number which you want to design and uh, deploy within your network. So if you have a four byte ASN, you should uh, go through this document. This document should be very much helpful for you.